Happy Friday. Welcome back to another five weekly favorites. We have some good things to share. Mm -hmm. um, what should we start with? We'll start with the skincare favorite that I have. I know Carly hasn't tried it. I know I haven't gotten to. We should just purchase another one. Because yeah. It's so good. This is the Burst Smooth Landing Advanced Retinoid Eye Balm. And I have been using the Kira Wise Eye Balm like every morning under makeup. I feel like it really helps to like prep the under eyes for concealer and makeup. And I notice when I don't use it. But I feel like because that one is more, it's like a bit of a thinner layer. And I feel like it's not shiny at all. It almost has like a satin finish. So you can layer product on top of it pretty easily. Whereas this is definitely like a PM eye balm, I would say. Because it, it leaves the under eyes looking like definitely more dewy. Um, so I don't know if you could like really wear this in the AM. But I like having like the Kira Wise one for morning and like under makeup. And then this one for nighttime. And it really just, I love the feeling of an eye balm personally. I feel like it really just like forms that occlusive barrier under the eyes which is like the driest part of my whole body mm -hmm. <laughs> and I feel like this is working really well like it's I don't well it's hard to say because I have another eye cream that I've been using all like longer a lot longer that I'm putting in monthly favorites and that one like I have noticed a difference so I feel like maybe the two of them together because that's a retinol eye cream and this is an eye balm but sometimes I even like go crazy and layer them like I'll put on the eye cream and then right before it like I'll let it sit for a few hours and then right before I go to bed I'll like put on the balm um anything to keep my under eyes looking young and youthful but I love this I love that it comes in like a little jar up, they might not be able to see where you have it oh I mean I feel like they can see but mm -hmm. it's it's really small it's really cute i like how small it is i just don't like the older i get the more like excess packaging kind of bothers me yeah like, i feel like look nice i want to try it oh well we can just get another one yeah. um but yeah it's they're definitely like this is different like i said than the cure wise like this one almost has like a i don't even know how to explain it but it's like a really smooth to the touch and that one like i said it's just like a little bit less greasy but not greasy in a bad way so I like them for both like different reasons, but this one I feel like because of the retinoid in here has to be like more effective at diminishing fine lines um, because I don't really put my tretinoin in like all the way up under my eyes. So I've been loving this. I love the packaging. I love the blue. I We love so many things from Verse. Maybe mm -hmm. we need to do like an updated Verse yeah, favorite. Yeah, that's true. But 10 out of 10 to recommend. Okay, I have a really random one, but I kept forgetting to put this in a weekly favorites and it's Hillary Kerr's newsletter. Mm -hmm. I think it's called Hello Everyone. Is that what it's that called? That sounds right. Um, but this week specifically reminded me because she did like, um, it was like her top five cookbooks or like she I don't named think I got that one. Really? I don't know why. It, um, this is what, or it was called, or it's called Hi Everyone is the newsletter and Oh, we should say who Hillary Kerr is. I just assume oh, everyone knows. Yeah. Um, so we were just talking about verse, so that's weird. Yes. Um, but Hillary Kerr founded, co-founded Who, What, Where with Katherine Powers. Mm -hmm. And then um, she's now, so they both still own that. Yeah. And then, um, and Versed, right? Um, I think I, Hillary does. I think Katherine did Versed. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, they, maybe that's not a joint venture, but they did that. And then she started her podcast, Second Life, which is one of our favorite podcasts. Mm -hmm. We love it so much, which is how we kind of like really got into her and like yes, follow her yeah. on social media because um, the podcast basically like spotlights women that have worked in one career and then transitioned to something else. Um, and it's always so good. She asks so the good. best yeah. questions. She just, like, I just love her personality. She's a really good journalist, like mm -hmm. in terms of like the actual like, like questions she asks and like she's always like, I feel like it makes people really easy to talk to her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we love her. And then at the end of last year, like I think in December, yeah, she started this newsletter. And I love that newsletters are coming back. Yeah, I love Ava Chen's too. And she mm -hmm. doesn't like do it anymore, but she had such a good one. Yeah, but um, the one this week, so basically you can go and sign up. Um, we can leave the link down below how we signed up. But it's called Hi Everyone by Hilary Kerr. And it's very like lifestyle thing. So if you guys watch our weekly favorites, I'm assuming you like yeah. our lifestyle recommendations. And that's what she puts in these newsletters. So the one this week was my seven essential recipe resources for next level cooking. So it's sort of like a mix between digital and physical. Like she talks about. But um, she had done one with her favorite recipes too. Yeah, but this one's like even more in depth because she talks about her favorite cookbooks, which I didn't know John and Benny had a cookbook. 
and she said that they released it in 2008 and they haven't come out with a new one since. Luna's right here. She's Luna girl, come, come in here. Come on, come on. Come on, up. Oh. Okay. Um, hey. And so she talks about that and then she talks about her must have recipes from each cookbook or resource. She talks about New York Times cooking, which we've raved about as mm -hmm. well. So what I'm getting at is sign up for the newsletter because they're like, it's like a long newsletter that has really good information. It's yeah. free. Um, and she always has like really good recommendations. So yeah. you guys would definitely like it. These are a new style of denim from Zara. They're called the Zara Slim Jeans. Um, so I got like the medium wash. If I can remember, I will put a picture of me wearing them so you guys can see them on. But I got the medium wash and I got them in black. I think they're only like $45. They're so affordable. I have them in black too. They feel like rigid denim, but there is 1% elastin in here, um, which helps like a little bit of the stretch. And I will say the blue fit a little bit tighter than the black, but they both fit me. I sized, well, I, I want to say I sized up to a four, but I feel like every time at Zara, I like have to size up in their mm -hmm. denim. Um, unless they're like a stretchy, stretchy material, then I'll go with like the usual two. Um, but I got these in a four and they fit great. I'm 5'4", Carly's 5'3". They fit, like they hit right at the ankle. They're super high-waisted. They're just oh, really, so sweet. Aww. Sorry, go on. They're just really flattering, I feel like. I feel like they're like a nice thick material, so they kind of like suck everything in. And they're like that vintage style, but a little bit tighter, which I feel like makes them flattering. Yeah, like they're like a vintage waist with a slim leg. Yeah. I'd say. Um, and formerly, my favorite style from them was the slim fit high rise and i feel like these are similar to those but they have almost more of a tapered leg um they're not like just straight leg mm -hmm. and so i really love them i'm probably gonna get like the light jean too i know i've been on like a way too i bought i bought three pairs of jeans in the past like week i yeah, need to I stop love jeans i love them too. i love jeans and i wear them all i rotate through them all mm -hmm. i wear them until they rip really so i love these like if i find a new style i like i'm just gonna keep buying them because mm -hmm. it's really hard to find as you guys know it's hard to find a good pair of denim that like fits your body perfectly and these fit almost perfectly mm -hmm. so i love those um do you want to talk about the show how i met your father yeah sure so we have a new show favorite you guys know we loved younger we talked about it so many times because it's like our basically like our all-time favorite like yeah. show um and we love hillary duff and yes. we love when she's in television shows so we were so excited when we knew that how i met your father was coming out so it's basically like a spin-off of how i met your mother but a whole new cast and it's i don't even want to say it's a spin-off because it's basically like it's the same idea but it's a different storyline it's basically yeah. from a female's perspective instead of a male's which yeah. i also love because the year is 2022 yeah and like when how i met your mother started it was a long time ago so it's kind of like it seems like modern day yeah like modern day dating because yeah. they talk they reference like apps a lot yeah. and like um i just feel like they really bring like 2022 into yes. the show whereas how i met your mother was just you know older yeah so a different time um and we really love it so far we never watched how i met your mother mm -hmm. um we think we would really like it but we love the cast of this show like everyone really fits together really well like you know we're a sucker for those shows like friends with like three an guys and three cast. girls we love an ensemble cast yeah so we just really like the cast um the writing's really good the premise is really cute yeah, and sometimes, sometimes i feel really like the like characters it. can be a little over the top yeah like the british guy yeah well he's the only one that i feel i like guess it's true like just him mm -hmm. um but i really like all the characters together mm -hmm. and there it's in new york anything set in new york we'll watch i know um and we always we actually really like vibe with hulu shows i feel like yeah well i mean murders in the building is still so like good i can't believe mm -hmm. how good it is i know but even the mindy project when that moved to hulu. oh that's true and then four weddings mm -hmm. we also love yeah. Yeah, that's one of my favorite shows yeah. ever too. So we generally really like our mini series, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, and then the last favorite is a food favorite, the last one, right? Yeah. Um, is row row cinnamon rolls. Our best friend Alyssa got them for us for our birthday and she had seen like some bloggers talk about them. They're from Texas, Houston or Austin, I can't mm -hmm. remember. Yeah. But they originate in Texas and you can order them online. They come in like a two-pack 
And you guys. Oh, they come in a two pack? Yeah. Oh. You know how much we love cinnamon rolls. Well, hopefully you do. I don't know if you do, actually. If you don't know this, now you do. Yeah, it's our we favorite have a, fruit. a sick obsession with cinnamon rolls. And I think that's why we're so picky about, like, oh, the we don't book like, I just read, she was obsessed with cinnamon rolls, really? too. Really? Like, we don't like the canned, like, Pillsbury. Like, those are not cinnamon rolls. And I, like, will not eat them. But the canned Trader's ones aren't bad. They're not good. The pumpkin ones are good. The pumpkin yeah. ones by Trader's, I love those. But, like, usually the it's canned ones... Weird idea. Okay, then <laughs> they're just not good. Um, <laughs> so whenever we see, like, a cinnamon roll at, like, a bakery, really anywhere, if we see a cinnamon roll on the menu, we're going to order it. And we love them so much. So Alyssa sent us these for our birthday, and they're so good. They come in, like, a circle aluminum pan, and they're actually a smaller size, which is nice because sometimes we can overdo it on mm -hmm. the cinnamon rolls. So I like that they were a little bit smaller. And my thing with cinnamon rolls is I don't want them to have too much frosting or icing. I really love the doughy cinnamon goodness. And I yeah. don't want the frosting to like overpower ever. These didn't do that. We tried them, like warmed up in the microwave. We tried them in the air fryer, uh -huh. like baking them. Every way we tried them, they were amazing. They almost have a little bit of almond flavor. Yeah, that was them, my favorite part. I think is like the kicker. Yeah, I... I do have I do have one complaint. I wish they had a little more icing, but Britta really liked it because she doesn't like a lot it. of icing. Yeah. But I like some icing. Um, but the flavor was like the best flavored cinnamon yes. roll I think I've ever had. It was amazing, you guys. Yeah, so so good. They tasted well. They were homemade, but like you know, mm -hmm. they tasted like fresh. For that a actually reminded me a lot. Um, I went to Iceland with my boyfriend's family one year, and they're actually known for like um, well, we stayed in the capital, and they had like this bakery that was like known for their cinnamon rolls, and it's like a thing there. And they didn't have really icing on them either because it's just like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. known for like, like the Ikea, bread and the like cinnamon. Ikea has yeah. like very minimal icing. Yeah, and it reminded me a lot of that one. So, actually, now fun. that we're on the topic, real quick before I close this video, we were just talking about how we'd never made homemade cinnamon rolls and like don't come for us because we, they just seem so hard and like if we mess them up, we'd be really sad. So, if you have a good cinnamon roll recipe that you think we could make at home, please leave it down below. Yeah. Because we will immediately do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching this weekly favorites. We hope you enjoyed it and let us know what you've been loving down below and please enjoy your weekend.